Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about some things that I do when I'm getting ready to work on an old ham radio transceiver like the SBE Model 34 that you see behind me. Before I get started, I have to say it, and <laughs> you guys already know it, I'm not an expert. So anything that you see in this video is just for your reference and entertainment only. If you're going to work on something like this, make sure that you work safely. And if you're not sure what you're doing or you feel like you're in an unsafe condition, make sure that you stop and get some help from a professional before you continue. So plugging in an old radio in unknown condition and just turning it on is never a good idea. There could be major problems with the radio that would either further damage it or you could have problems with the electrical system or your power supply and even cause a fire in extreme cases. So I'll show you guys a couple of things that I do with old radios like this to try and prevent issues from happening. So this particular radio can be powered from either AC or DC. Right now I've got it wired up to run on DC, so we'll talk about that first. The best thing to do with a DC powered radio is to use a current and voltage limited power supply like the one I'm showing here. And what you can do with a power supply like this is set voltage and current limits so that if there's a major problem with the radio, it can't draw too much power from the power supply and damage the components in the radio. So with a current limited power supply, what I like to do with something like this is take a look at the owner's manual and find out how much current the radio should draw in receive mode to start off with. Then I would go to the current limited power supply and set that current limit to that value. Then, once I turn the radio on in receive mode, what should happen is that the radio should draw somewhat less than what the manual says it should, and everything should work properly. Now the idea is that if there's a major problem with the radio and it tries to draw more current than it should, the limit on the power supply won't let that happen, and hopefully that would prevent damaging anything inside the radio. So in addition to a current limiting power supply, a variable voltage power supply can also be useful for dealing with old radios like this. And the reason that's helpful is because the components inside an old radio like this that haven't been powered up in a long time may be overtaxed if the full working voltage is applied all at once. So using a variable voltage power supply to start off at a low voltage and increment up to the working voltage of 12 or maybe 13.8 over the course of several hours or maybe even days if you want to play it real safe will allow those components to sort of acclimate to the voltage and not be stressed by a sudden burst of voltage all at one time. I don't have a current limited power supply in my shack, but there is sort of a poor man's trick that I can do to help prevent catastrophic damage and give myself a little bit of protection. And I'll show you guys what that is now. So this radio is currently wired up to run on 12 volts. So as such, I've got the power cord connected up to my 12 volt regulated power supply that you see right there. Now I've got the negative lead connected right to the power supply. But on the positive side of the power cord, I'm going to insert this 12 volt bulb in series. This just happens to be a tail lamp bulb that I had spare laying around. So I'm going to connect up the power supply side of the power cord to one terminal of the bulb, and I'll connect the radio side of the cord to the other terminal. So now that I have the bulb hooked up, let's turn the radio on and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, this bulb is lit up full brightness. Now the reason for that is because the transformer inside this radio has a dead short in it. So I put together a simple schematic to try and make a basic explanation as to what's going on here. So you can see over here on the left, this is representing the 12 volt power supply. This up here is the 12 volt bulb that's in the circuit in series with the positive lead of the power supply. And then over here, this is the transformer that's inside the radio. These are the primary windings. These are the secondary windings, and then the rest of the radio circuitry would be over here off the right of the page. So ignoring high level electrical engineering theory, I'm just gonna give a basic explanation here. So what would happen is when the radio is turned on, energy would start to flow from the positive lead of the power supply through the lamp and then into the primary windings of the transformer and then off and power the radio up. Now, if the radio were working normally, the lamp would act as sort of a low value resistor in series between the power supply and 
the radio. And therefore, it really wouldn't dissipate much power. In fact, it may not even light up at all. Most of the power would travel through the lamp and into the radio and be consumed by the radio. But in my case, the primary windings of the transformer are shorted. So the circuit actually looks more like this. So what happens is, is when the radio is turned on, instead of the energy flowing through the transformer and being sent into the radio, all of the energy wants to travel through this dead short and back into the power supply. So because the transformer is shorted and all the energy is going to flow directly through what's essentially just a wire now, all of the load and power is going to be consumed by the lamp. And that's why in the previous video clip you saw the light bulb light up full brightness because all of the power <laughs> was going through it and not being consumed over here. And the upshot of this is if we didn't have the bulb here and we had just a straight connection here through the power supply, we'd basically just be shorting the output of the power supply and that could damage it. Adding the lamp gives us a load and allows the energy to dissipate without doing any damage to the power supply. So just for the sake of demonstration purposes, I've got a functional radio hooked up to my power supply with the lamp in series. If I turn the radio on, you can see that the radio comes on and works, but the bulb is not lit up at all. So if I want to test out AC power operation on this radio, I can set up the same type of light bulb limiter that I did for DC with a light socket and an old incandescent bulb. So I don't have this hooked up and ready to go yet because I don't have all the pieces I need to make this safe. As I'm sure you know, the AC wall voltage is somewhere around 120 volts and a little bit more dangerous and susceptible to problems than working with 12 volts. So I want to go down to the hardware store and get a few more pieces to make sure this is safe before I hook it up and use it. But the idea is the same. I'm going to wire this incandescent light bulb in series with the power cord of the radio so that if when I plug the radio in and turn it on, there's a short inside the radio like we saw on the DC side, the light bulb will absorb that power and prevent the energy from getting into the radio or doing damage to the electrical system in my house. So in conjunction with the light bulb to test AC power, I also can use this Variac. Now what this is, is basically a variable transformer that I can use to adjust the AC wall voltage. And this particular unit will go from zero all the way up to 140 volts. So what I would do is I plug my radio in to the light bulb limiter and then plug the limiter into the Variac. And then what I can do is starting at zero, increase the voltage slowly. Now this will do a couple of different things for me. The first thing is that it doesn't allow the components inside the radio to be stressed by a sudden jolt of energy if everything is working correctly. So in other words, what can happen is when you plug an old radio in that's been sitting for a long time, if especially the capacitors inside see that voltage applied all of a sudden, if they're somewhat marginal because they're old, they can fail right away. But if you bring the voltage up slowly over the course of several hours, or maybe even in some cases days, the capacitors will have a chance to sort of acclimate to the voltage and won't catastrophically fail as soon as you plug the radio in or turn it on. And that can prevent a nasty surprise or even some smoke and fire in the form of a capacitor suddenly exploding because it's overstressed. Now the other thing it'll do, especially in the case of this radio that we know has a dead short in the primary windings of the transformer, is as I bring this voltage up, this light bulb will get brighter and brighter, letting us know there's a problem. If the light bulb doesn't light up, that means the radio is consuming the power and not the light bulb, and we can continue to increase the voltage up to the 120 volt operating voltage. So here's a look at the simplified schematic I made up for the AC situation. Now over here, this represents the AC wall outlet or AC mains. This here is my incandescent light bulb. This symbol right here is supposed to represent my variac. And then over here is the transformer in the radio. And then off the right side of the page would be the rest of the radio circuitry. So under normal conditions and assuming that the variac is set to 120 volts, what would happen is the same thing that happens in the DC setup. The energy would flow through the lamp 
through the variac and into the radio and be consumed mostly by the radio. The light bulb wouldn't consume hardly any power at all, and if it glowed at all, would be real dim. But just like on the DC side, we're dealing with a shorted transformer. So what's happening is the energy is flowing through this dead short, which again looks just like a wire, so all of the energy would be consumed by the light bulb and dissipated. Now the only difference with this circuit is that I've got the variac in play. So I've got an additional level of control over the circuit. Now with the variac in play, if it's set to zero, it'll essentially work like a switch and not allow any current to flow through. It'll look like an open right here. But as I start to raise the voltage on the variac, energy will flow through the circuit, couple to this side of the circuit, and begin flowing over here. And because we've got the short over here, it's going to work just like it did without the variac in play. The only difference is that the voltage will be proportional to whatever the variac is set to. So as I raise the level of the variac, more and more energy will flow through the circuit, and the bulb will get brighter and brighter. Working with this stuff can be a little bit dangerous, so make sure that you know what you're doing, have your wits about you, and go slow. And if you're not sure what to do, stop and get some help. So do you have any tips or tricks that you use when you're working on old radios? If you do, let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to learn more about my channel, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching!